Hello everyone and welcome to rchelp.com. I'm Tony and today we're going to be talking about flybar head setup. I've had members from YouTube and from the forum sending me PMs, uh, commenting in the forum and sending me messages on YouTube asking me to do a complete from start to finish flybar head setup video. That is exactly what we're going to do today. As you can see, I've got the HK450 GT sitting here. Don't worry about this. Crashed it. Had to replace it with something cheap. I've got my DX8 sitting back here. I've got the battery on here. The servos are installed. And I'm going to assume that your radio is already set up with the name, the swash type, and so on and so forth. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the time you get finished building your helicopter to after you put your name and everything into your radio. From servo reversing to servo sub trim to adjusting all the links. Now on this helicopter I have the manual. This, the HK450 GT, is an exact clone of the Align 450 SE V2. I have the manual on the website. Go over, download it, and that will show you exactly what these links are set at. It has the beginning settings so that you can adjust the length of each one of these links from up here to these to these to your uh, servo to swash links and it'll get you very close to being correct on your head setup. Now when we do this, we're going to start from the bottom and we're going to work our way up. First we're going to do the servos, then we're going to do the swash plate, then we're going to do the washout arms, then we're going to do the mixing arms, then we're going to do the blade pitch. Guys, it's not real hard to set these up. I know there's a lot of links on these and it can be intimidating at times, but trust me, it's really easy. It does take a while. This video is probably going to run on for a little while. But if you actually sit down and do this from the very beginning, you're going to have a helicopter that's way more stable than just throwing it in the air and saying, now nah, that's good enough. You guys, do your head setup. It's the same as doing your tail setup. If you do your head setup, you'll have a much more stable helicopter. So the very first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure all the servos are going in the correct direction. To do that, We'll turn our radio on, and then we'll plug in our helicopter. Make sure your throttle's not up. All right, radio's on, helicopter's on, we're ready to go. Now, very first thing, you have to think about safety, guys. I've got a computer monitor over here. I'm sitting really close to the helicopter, and we're going to be playing with these sticks. Yes, I do have my throttle hold on. The motor will not come on. However, we are going to unplug two of these motor wires. Alright, as you can see, I unplugged the black and I unplugged the blue. What that's going to do, if I flip off throttle hold, that is not going to let this helicopter spool up. If you have two of them still connected, it can still spool up. So guys, unplug two of your wires. Save your computer monitor, and if you're sitting at eye level like I am, save your face, because these things hurt when they hit you. Ask me how I know. We've all been there. So, motor's unplugged, throttle holds on. The reason throttle hold is on is because you have a full range of pitch. As you can see, going up and down, those servos aren't quite right. If I go back on the elevator, yeah, still not right. And right there's the aileron. All right. Now the way you figure out which servos need to be reversed is with your throttle channel. It's the easiest way, guys. Go up and then come down. As you can see, the left front is the pitch, the rear is the elevator. Those are going in the right direction. However, this aileron servo is not going in the right direction. So we know that we need to reverse this one right here. Now, what if we went up and these two over here went down? Well, guys, it's still, as long as the servos are moving together, you know, so if I go up and those two are going down, but this one's going up, we're still going to reverse this one, and then we're going to go into our swash mix and we're going to reverse it there. So what we need to do is we need to go into our reverse menu and we need to reverse this one servo right here, which is the aileron servo. Alright, to go into it, what we'll do, click in here and then go down to servo setup. This is how it is on the DX8. Once in the servo setup, we'll scroll down and then we'll click reverse. Scroll down here and we'll pick aileron. 
then we scroll down and all I have to do is push this button and I'll move the radio out of the way once I click the button you can see that it reversed that servo yeah the servos way down there but I'm not at mid stick so now whenever we go up the swash plate goes up down swash plate goes down and then when I pull back the swash plates going back forward and now I'll flip the helicopter around here so it's in the right orientation for you guys when I go left the swash is going left go right the swash is going right that's exactly what you want now all of our servos are set up to where they are moving in the correct direction now the next step is to 90 degree the servo arms to the links all right so what we're going to do is we're going to back out of this menu and we're going to come down here to pitch curve now in the pitch curve obviously you can see that i've got it on the normal mode now if i scroll over i'll go to position one or idle up one what i want to do is i want to move my stick now down here i've got my stick travel and then i've got my servo travel what we'll do is we'll move that stick up until we're right at 50 percent sometimes on these radios this line doesn't exactly line up as you can see mine's really close so i could actually use that line to set mid stick however by doing it down here it's a much better way now that we got our radio at mid stick we're just going to set this radio aside all right now it's personal preference as to what servo you want to start with i always start with aileron then i go to elevator and then i go to pitch and the reason i do that is you can see the aileron and the elevator on the same side of the helicopter just keeps from having to spin it around less likely chance of me smacking my monitor back there as you can see the aileron servo is real close it just needs to come up i mean just a hair so what we're going to do is we're going to get our radio bring us a little closer so you guys can see this get our radio back out of this menu and then we're going to go up here into servo setup now in servo setup what we need to do is come over here to sub trim go down go over and click aileron now we can adjust the aileron servo all right now as you can see this servo arm is sitting just a little bit low so what we'll do i'll move the wheel to the left that's going to raise this servo arm and right about there i'm 18 clicks to the left that i mean the servo arm is perfectly level next we'll move on to the elevator changing to the elevator we'll just click here come up and then move over to elevator simple as that okay so we can see our elevator arm in there we'll start moving the wheel we got to move this one to the left as well and here a good indicator is that screw that little ball link and then this hole right here as long as you are perfectly level with this arm it'll work out every time you can use your straight edge and as you can see it's perfect now we got to move on to the pitch servo all right same thing in the radio you'll move over to pitch and then we'll start adjusting this servo arm now this one i'm having to move to the right that looks really close we'll get our straight edge and that's dead on all right so now we know that these servo arms are completely level on all three servos now this radio will never be touched until we start doing the pitch settings we can just set this radio over here to the side that way there's no chance of us bumping the throttle stick and throwing everything off all right so now that we got all of our servo arms centered or 90 degree to the links what we need to do is we need to remove everything from about here up and the way we'll do that is we're going to pop off these two links on both sides and then we're going to pop off our radius arms now if you have a set of ball link pliers this is extremely easy if you don't you're going to have fun with them radius arms all right with all the links removed from the swash what we need to do is we need to remove this one bolt right here all right once the bolts removed the head should lift right off the helicopter now what we got to do is we have to level the swash plate now if you have a swash plate leveling tool that just slides right over sits on your three arms right here then this is easy as pie you just set it down there and you adjust your links do not adjust the servo sub trims to get this swash plate level you only adjust your links this is where the manual is going to come in really really handy if you have your servo arms perfectly 90 if you set these to the manual they're going to be really really close and you're not going to have much adjustment to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust my swash plate with a zip tie 
If you haven't seen the video, check out the video. It's right there in the annotation on your screen. All right, after adjusting my lengths, as you can see, I've got a very little bit of a gap, not much of one at all, right there. Spin it around here. Again, not very much. And then over here on this one, not very much. That is exactly what you want. It's the exact same thing that a swash leveling tool does, except we did it for free. Now that we know that our swash plate is level, we can go ahead and remove our new swash plate leveling tool. So now that the swash plate is level, we can go ahead and put the head back on the helicopter. Now remember, when you're putting this back together, these pins have to go into this block. All right, so once everything's on there, we'll go ahead, slide the head down over the shaft, find the hole, and put your bolt through. Now don't forget, if your head doesn't have a nylon locking nut, Put a little bit of blue thread lock on there so it doesn't come flying off and your head flies off your helicopter while you're up in a hover or flying around. All right, once we have the bolt in there, now we can start snapping all of our links back on. And no, it doesn't matter where they go. All right, so now we've 90 our servos and we've got our swash plate level. We went from the servos up to the swash plate. Now we're at the washout arms. As you can see, the washout arms are not even with each other so we're going to have to adjust these links until these arms are completely even now each individual helicopter is going to be different on mine i'm going to have to shorten my arms because i need to bring this side up and then by bringing this up this will actually bring this side down when i adjust this link over here so we'll go ahead pop this link off go half one now on some helicopters like this one the clones you can do half turns on these but on a line helicopters, you have to go a full turn. Snap that back on. As you can see, that's closer, but we still have to go one turn on this link right here. So we'll do half one, pop our link back on. As you can see, it's relatively close. We still need to go about another turn shorter. All right. There's one turn on that one, and one turn on that one. As you can see, it's starting to get really, really close. We still need to come up just a hair, so we'll do it another turn. You'll keep doing this until the center of this ball matches this screw right here. Okay, now you can see that the center of that ball and the center of this bolt here are perfectly level. The arms are level straight across. Now we can move up to the mixing arms, which are back here behind the fly bar cage. All right, when adjusting your mixing arms, you need to make sure that your fly bar is completely level. If you have a fly bar locking tool, that'd be the best way to do this. We really need to shorten these links quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll pop it off the swash down here and I'll shorten these links until that bolt there, this bolt here, and this bolt back here are in a perfectly straight line. It's just like adjusting the washout arms, except this one's a little bit harder to see. All right, one thing to point out on the 450 SCV2 is the top is kind of, it's got an angle to it, and the bottom is completely flat. What I do is I match the bottom of that arm and make sure it is completely horizontal straight across. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to line up both sides because as you're sitting here tipping it, that left side stay in put, but the right side is adjusting the blade pitch. Just level out your fly bar and then look at it, that's pretty close and there we have the other side so as you can see that side real close swing it around that side as well almost perfectly level now like I say all you can do is eyeball it that's all you can do now we get to move on and now we're up to these right here this is when the pitch gauges come in now when looking at pitch gauges you have two different options you've got the mechanical and you've got the digital the digital obviously is going to be more accurate and this is what I'm going to use. These work best if you have a fly bar locking tool. If you don't, if you don't have the digital, you don't have a fly bar locking tool, whatever, these, they'll get you right there in the ballpark. But on this video, we're going to use the digital one because it's going to get our head set up as close as possible to being perfect. Now with using a digital pitch gauge, you can zero them out. 
so you have to calibrate them every time you use them now every desk or every table or floor or whatever you're working on is not going to be perfectly level and you need to calibrate your pitch gauge so what you do is this up here is about as flat as you're going to get this right here is going to be perpendicular to your main shaft so what we'll do is we'll set our gauge right up here on top of the frame we'll turn it on as you can see about 0.3.4 with it resting down there and you holding it just like this holding it steady we'll go ahead and zero it out now it is going to kind of change a little bit because I mean this thing it is incredibly sensitive now that we know that we're level looking like this looking straight forward from us we can go ahead turn our helicopter just like this and then we can slide our pitch gauge onto the blade all right so now that we know that our pitch gauge is level with whatever surface your helicopter happens to be sitting on now we can start checking the pitch I'm at mid stick as you can see with the radio right over there the helicopter's on and as you can see 0 0.7 0 0.8 of a degree of positive pitch positive pitch means the trailing edge is facing down which will force air down as the blades are spinning and lifting your helicopter up alright so we got 0 0.7 0 0.8 on that blade go ahead and take it off spin the blades around stick it on here and as you can see we're at about negative 0.2 so we need to take the other blade this blade is I mean really really close two tenths of a degree is not going to make much difference at all but eight tenths of a degree on the other blade is going to make a difference so we'll go ahead and we'll leave this blade alone flip this around here and we'll see if we can't get that seven or eight tenths to come out of there now, like I say if you just so much as bump these things it's going to affect your reading all right so we got positive pitch we need to bring this blade up in order to bring the trailing edge up on this blade we're going to have to lengthen this one or shorten this long link over here some of you guys have no choice but to adjust these links right here so i need to lengthen this one and that'll bring my blade up all right i lengthened it as you can see i went too far now we're at negative 1.3 all right so now we'll shorten the link I went a full turn now some of you guys can only go full turns however I can go half turns because this is a cheap clone and I guess it's just cheaper to make the links that way all right turn it back down one turn or half a turn I should say all right got the adjusting done as you can see it's bouncing 0 0.2 0 0.3 that's not bad now, redundancy is your friend. I, I assure you, check and recheck again and again. So what we'll do, we'll take this off, spin the blade around here, make sure your blades are straight with the head. Slide your pitch gauge back on. I tell you what, dead on or a tenth of a degree off, man, you ain't gonna get no better than that. Now we need to get our radio back here because now we got to check our full positive pitch and full negative pitch. This is why you want that linear pitch curve. Now as you can see, I'm still in the pitch curve menu. That way I know I'm at exactly mid stick. Now what we'll do is we'll go full positive pitch. Alright, I got 9.1 degrees of positive pitch. Don't worry about not having 10, or 10 degrees or 11 degrees or whatever just yet. All right, so 9.1, 9.2, somewhere in that area, bouncing around. Go full negative. I'm showing about 10 degrees. All right, double check it. There's 9.5, 10.3. So I'm almost a degree low. So I've got, basically, I've got 10 degrees of negative pitch, 9 degrees of positive pitch. If you have more negative pitch than you do positive, then your swash plate is too low. If you have more positive pitch than you do negative pitch, then your swash plate is going to be too high. You adjust this out by adjusting your swash links. One degree is really, really close, and we can easily adjust this out. So what we need to do, since we have more negative pitch, then we do positive pitch we need to raise the swash plate and we're going to do that by lengthening these 
Now, in my case, I can go a half turn. In your case, you may have to go a full turn and we'll just have to get it as close as we can. All I've got to do, pop these links off. Yes, it's a clone. They come off that easy. And I'm going to lengthen them a half a turn. Like I say, you may have to go a full turn. Now, on your elevator, I had a guy ask me about this. He says, what is the easiest way of doing the elevator linkage? He's like, do I have to disassemble the whole head? Well, the easiest way is to just take this right here off. However, you can take out your bolts in your anti-rotation bracket and just pull it back. You know, on mine, I can pull mine back a pretty good ways. So, if I raise my swash all the way up, I can slide mine out just like that. Then, I'll just take a pair of pliers, pop that off, and then lengthen it half a turn, pop it back on. Let's bring our blade back around here now that we've adjusted our swash. All right, full positive pitch, 9.5. Full negative pitch, 9.8. Let me tell you, three tenths of a degree, four tenths of a degree, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so we'll double check it again. We've got 9.6, and there's 9.7. Let me tell you guys, a tenth of a degree, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that at all. So let's check the other blade. Like I said, redundancy. If you guys are redundant on checking this, you're going to know absolutely positively that your blades are set up correctly. All right, there we got 10.1 and 9.8. One thing I would like to add is clones are a piece of crap and they got a lot of play. Don't believe me? Well, that's actually the good blade. Check out this blade. Yep, that's in here. I've actually got a line thrust bearings and and I've got a line dampers and everything else. And it's it's the actual blade grips that are bad. So I'm going to have a little bit of discrepancy in this one. If you're doing this on an actual a line helicopter, you're not going to have these problems. So we'll check the other blade. Full negative. We're looking at about nine seven and 10. 9, 9, 10, 1. Seems to be a lot of discrepancy on this one. Now this could be attributed to just being a clone. I mean, you're gonna have slop in a lot of places. Let me tell you guys, I am not going to worry about anything less than half a degree. If you're within a half a degree, then you're ready to go. Look back at your radio, make sure you're at mid-stick if you can. If you can't, just put it as close to mid-stick as you think you can get. Once you're back at mid-stick, look at your reading again. As you can see, because we had to adjust that swash, your mid-stick zero degree rating is off again. So, I've got positive 0 0.7, 0 0.8, it kind of bounces around, you know, if you hit the desk, it does kind of bounce around. If you hit the helicopter, it's going to bounce around. So, I've got... Po all right, so I've got positive 0 0.7, 0 0.6, bounces around. I need to take and lengthen this rod one more time. Again, you may have to shorten this one. All right, I put a half turn on it. And as you can see, I went from a half a degree over, or 0 0.7 degree over, to 0 0.3 degree under. So I'm not able to dial out any more than that without adjusting that long link which like I say you guys are gonna have to do so I need to put just a little bit of positive pitch back in this one which means on this long link right here I'm actually going to need to lengthen that one and like I say I can go half turns on mine and there we go a half turn got that perfect alright so we'll take that off We'll spin our blades around here. I do have my radio in the way this time. Make sure the blade's straight. And check it. Alright, as you can see, I've got 0 0.8, 0 0.7 degrees of positive pitch. Alright, so what I'll do, again, I'll lengthen this one to get rid of some of that positive pitch. Alright, and now we're sitting at a tenth, two tenths, something like that. 
All right, so we adjusted our links. We'll go ahead and we'll check our high pitch setting. We're at 9.4, 9.5, kind of bouncing around again. Low, 9.6. That is really, really close. All right, let's check that other blade. All right, negative 9.7 and positive 10. That, I am really not gonna worry about that. That is really, really close. All right, so we're done with our pitch gauge and our head is all but set up. The only thing left now is to go outside, fly it, and look at your blade tracking. Now, as you can see, and I'm sure you've seen in the video, I actually have a piece of tracking tape right here. I actually use this to help balance these blades out, and this just happens to be exactly where it needed to be. So guys, as you saw, you start out by getting everything set up in your radio, 90 degree your servos, then level your swash plate, then we're going to level our washout arms, level the mixing arms, and then we're going to check the blade pitch. Once we start checking the blade pitch, we're going to check for zero degrees at mid stick. If we're not at zero degrees, then adjust either this link or this small link here, if you can, and get it to exactly zero degrees. Then check your full positive and full negative pitch. If they are dead on or within a half a degree, leave it. I mean, I'm talking if you're getting 9.5 on the negative side and then 10 degrees on the positive side, yeah, you're a little bit high on your swash, but you're not going to be able to take it out. Just leave it. I would actually say if you can get within a degree, then you're safe. You're safe to go ahead, take it outside, and fly it and see what happens. Make sure that both blades have a really, really, really close pitch setting. I'm talking within three tenths. If you can get them within three tenths, then you know that you're not going to have any blade tracking issues whatsoever, and there's not going to be any vibration issues. If at any time you have to put a lot of adjustment on a link, then you're going to throw out your washout arms and your mixing arms. I mean, you're just you're flat going to throw them out of whack, and you're going to have to go back and adjust and get those back level again. Remember. These links right here are going to adjust your full positive and full negative numbers as well as leveling the swash plate. These are going to get your fly bar cage to where it is perfect. It's perfectly level. If you just measure these out and get them exactly the same, then your fly bar cage is going to be level. These right here are going to adjust your mixing arms. But on some of you guys that have the solid links, these are also going to be used to adjust your pitch. And if you have to adjust your pitch and you get the correct settings and these aren't quite level, well, there's not really much you can do about that because, well, everything's solid. These are solid. The small links up here that attach to the blade grips are solid. And like I say, it's, it's a redundant battle. It takes forever to get it done correctly. But once it's done, guys, it's done. All we have left to do is we need to go into our radio and we need to set up Full travels. Now, as you saw, I was at 9.5 to 10, and that's exactly where I want this helicopter. That just happens to be where it is. So what I'll do is I'll move the helicopter out of the way, and we'll get the radio back up here. All right, so let's say that you're getting only 7 degrees of pitch, up and down, positive and negative, and you needed to increase that. Or, whenever you're doing your servo setup, like I say, I didn't have to do anything in the swash mix menu because mine was already set up. But if you go up, and your swash plate goes down. Like I say, do not go into your reverse menu and reverse that. You're just going to mess yourself up. Make sure all three of them are moving with each other. And this is how you're going to go in and actually reverse that or add or subtract pitch. What we'll do is we'll go in here. Go up here to swash plate. Go in there. As you can see here, positive 60, positive 60, positive 60. If your collective was backwards then what you'll do is you'll take this number on your pitch and you'll go from a positive 60 to a negative 60. That is going to make your swash plate go reverse of what it was currently doing before. If you need more pitch, then go from positive 60 to positive 70. Go by 10% increments and put your pitch gauge back on and look at it. If you're really close, then you can go up by 5. If you get really, really close, then start going up by one until you get that perfect pitch that you want. I suggest for a new pilot that you guys run between seven and 10 degrees of collective pitch. And the reason I say that, seven degrees is really gonna soften it up. Yeah, you're gonna have to get that stick up there a little higher. But 
it's not going to be as sensitive. You know, if you move this, let's say that line right there. If you move it from right there to right there, if you have 14 degrees of collective pitch, that is going to take off and it's going to start climbing. However, if you have 7 degrees of collective pitch, this is just barely going to start getting it off the skids and then you might lift off right here. So, 14 degrees, this is going to make you take off. Whereas 7 degrees, this is going to make you take off. You have your it's a lot more forgiving. It's just like putting Expo in. And speaking of Expo, I don't ever run Expo and I definitely don't run E-ring in this. E-ring basically gets rid of this corner that you see right there. You see some people will actually have a ring and whenever they're doing like pyro flips, you know, they're constantly grabbing the stick and going in circles. Well, if you try to do that with this square, it, yeah, I mean, it, it works, but it doesn't work. Like I say, I suggest between seven and 10 degrees of pitch for a new pilot. It seems to make the helicopter easier to fly for those just getting into it. Once you're into it, you can hover good, you can get into forward flight, and you start flying in a little bit of wind. Okay, go between 10 and 12 degrees of pitch. Now on your aileron and elevator, what this is going to do is, let's say that on your aileron, let's say you go left aileron and your swash plate moves to the right. What you'll do is you'll take that one and go to a negative 60. If your elevator, if you pull back and your swash plate goes forward, then you'll take this one to a negative 60 or vice versa. And as you can see, all of mine stayed positive and that is exactly how the helicopter needed to be set up. Every helicopter is going to be different on what your sub trims are going to be because of different servo horns. Uh, I mean, everything's going to be different. All I can do is give you kind of a baseline. Now, one thing to really pay attention to is your cyclic pitch. Cyclic pitch is something that is overlooked by many, many, many pilots, including me for a long time. I just left it on positive or negative 60 and I just went with it. And then all of a sudden I'm having to add a whole bunch of expo because this is just way too sensitive because I've got 10 or 11 degrees of cyclic pitch. It wasn't until I had a clear moment in my head that I realized lowering or raising these will actually soften this stick up, but you don't want to go too far. Let me show you real quick how to adjust that. To adjust your cyclic pitch, one, you're going to need to move your helicopter. Your blades are going to have to stay the same, but your helicopter is going to have to move. To check your elevator, which is forward and back, you want your blades to be perpendicular to the tail boom. Whenever we push full forward cyclic, as you can see, I'm only running 4.7 degrees of pitch, 4.8. All right, so we'll go back. You want to make sure that that is really, really close. And 5.2 from 4.7, 4.8, that's decently close. Remember, I'm running analog servos on this. There's 4.9. All right, to check your ailerons, what you'll do, you'll spin the helicopter around to where the blades are going in line with the tail boom. All right, so we got 0.1.2, full right aileron. We're looking at 4.9, left aileron, 5.2. I mean, it's, it's really, really close. So to adjust your cyclic pitch, what you'll do is I'm back running perpendicular to the tail boom with the main blades. We'll go onto the elevator because that's the one that this is gonna be checking. We'll push the elevator all the way up. As you can see, I got 5.7. Once you start increasing that number, you're gonna start increasing your pitch. I go until I get right about eight degrees. If you guys are new pilots, then leave it down there on 60 and leave yourself only about five degrees. That's gonna really soften up your sticks to where you know that you can control this thing and it's not gonna be just jumping all over the place. The more cyclic pitch you have, the, the, the harder it's gonna be to fly, the more reactive it's gonna be. So guys, we went through and we adjusted everything. We started out with the radio, then we went to the servos, went to swash plate, washout arms, mixing arms, blades, and we kept going back and forth. Like I said, this is a redundant game that everybody has to play to get a head set up correctly. If you guys have any questions, come over to the forum and post up. I'm sure that a lot of you guys are going to have questions after this. I tried to cover everything, and if I missed something, let me know what I missed, and I will help you guys out. I look forward to seeing you on the forum. Come over and like us on Facebook. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.